So in the past, I've done a couple of different types of videos, certainly reviews, and we won't be talking about that here, but I've also done business videos. So talk about how you get your business running as well as project videos. Now this video will be a little bit different because it'll be straddled in between project videos and, and the business. And what I'm gonna do is take you end to end through a project that I got recently from a customer. So let's get started. All right, so the inspiration for this video was a customer coming in a couple of weeks ago. He actually came in to pick up another project I'd done for him. It was a, a Christmas present for his son. Now, hopefully his son isn't watching the channel because I've just completely spoiled his Christmas. But he also brought in uh, another uh, just a, a plaque that he had a, at home and he wants to get a new one made and it's this. Now you can see this plaque is really fairly cheaply constructed. It's an MDF substrate and not even really good MDF, I'd say, uh, because it's kind of flaking on the sides. But on top of that, there's literally lo what looks like uh, a piece of probably cardstock or something with uh, his saying on the side and a picture. And, and that's laminated to the MDF and then the entire thing is covered with a, a really thin coat of some kind of acrylic, polycrylic finish or something. And uh, you can see the, the orangutan is really, really faded uh, to the point where almost the only color left on it is blue. And uh, he came in and he said, can you make a new one of these for me? And, I, and he said, I don't want it to be cheap. I want it to be good, so use a good piece of wood. Uh, as the background, maybe uh, engrave the, the saying on the side, uh, it, and I can do that with a CNC, and you know, find a really nice orangutan picture, and then maybe uh, you know, fill the entire thing with resin. So what I ended up with is what you see on the screen now, which is uh, a maple-based board, just solid maple board, uh, and I did end up laminating his photo on there. It's a different orangutan. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the exact one. I looked uh, at length to try and find it, but uh, couldn't, and that's because the original picture was probably 20 years old. And uh, then I, I engraved all the lettering in, uh, painted air, all of the engraving in black, and then covered the entire thing with about a quarter of an inch of uh, acrylic and then polished it all to a mirror finish. And this is what you have. And, uh, you know, hopefully he likes it. I think he's coming in tomorrow to pick it up. And uh, still in time for Christmas for him. I think it's a personal Christmas present though. So, uh, so that's what I'm gonna build. Now for the rest of the video, I'll show you some of the steps that I took and how I take, uh, the steps I take for a lot of projects, starting from, you know, selecting a piece of wood uh, possibly doing some glue up, uh, some CNC work, and uh, and then some finishing. And I'll, I'll skip a few steps here, but if you're really interested, leave a comment and and uh, I can you know maybe create uh, more detail on some of the tips here. Most of what you'll see here are just some tricks that I've used over over time to uh, to create things like how do you paint engraving and uh, you know those sorts of things. So. Uh, with that, we can get rolling on the actual construction here, and uh, in the end, you'll see what this what this really looks like, and uh, hopefully, you like the process here. Now, I think I've mentioned before that I have every power tool known to man. It's generally because I'm pretty lazy, but I also like to get things done very precisely. Anything you see here, though, except for the CNC, you can use hand tools for or hand power tools. And the first thing I do in any project is. I go to the wood rack and I get a piece of wood. And in this case, uh, the customer wanted maple. So I found a six inch maple board and I'm gonna cut it to about 12 inches, 30 centimeters. Uh, and then uh, you can see the edges are rough here. So I have to joint it because I'm gonna butt these two pieces together. Now, you again, you can use uh, y you know a hand plane if you don't have a jointer. Uh, but you can see I stack the boards together here so that when they go through the jointer, it creates a match pair so that when I lay them down and butt them together, they're a perfect fit. And that's very important because we're going to glue these together. So the next step is to take the two boards and the side I didn't joint, uh, I will uh, trim. You can see it's actually pretty rough on the side there. Uh, I also jointed the, the faces, by the way, uh, because uh, they were not really planed very well. Uh, this is really rough lumber, lumber normally when I start. Uh, then I'm going to pass both boards through the drum sander to 
take out any any curvature in the boards and uh, make them make sure they're the same thickness. You could also use a thickness planer here if you have one. Uh, I do, but it it was easier to use the drum sander. And then we do some glue up here. There's really only one joint, so it's pretty easy. Uh, this will make a board that's about 12 inches wide and uh, yeah, you know, glue it together well. Don't worry about spillover if you're if you're doing uh, gluing. You can see I actually laid some parchment paper down. It's because I really hate having to clean glue off of my clamps. Uh, so I just laid it down there and then tighten up all the clamps. And then I also put a clamp across the top to make sure the the two boards stay flat, just in case the side clamps are forcing it up. All right, so I'm not gonna go into a whole lot of detail here on how I actually designed this, but suffice it to say, there's a, a photo that's the size I want it, and the outline of the sign, I'm not gonna carve either of those, obviously not the photo, uh, but the outline is really just a reference for me so I know how big to make the sign. And uh, I have created two tool paths. One is a, is a V-carved path, and I'll use a 60 degree V-bit. Uh, to carve out the letters and that will make them all uh, just hollow letters. And then the other path is the outline for the photo. Uh, just again, just a, I'll use a V bit to create a, just a small channel around the, the edge of the picture to create a black border around it uh, later when I paint it. So that's the, uh, the CNC work and I'll just fire it over to my Onefinity and get this cut out. All right, with the CNC work done, I didn't show you the CNC stuff, but uh, what I'm gonna do now is just spray a couple of good coats of polycrylic on top of the surface here. And you might wonder why, but this makes painting easier uh, later on because it, it seals the wood and allows you to make a few mistakes on the painting without causing any major damage. All right, so when we're painting here, because we put that polycrylic on, we can just dab, uh, and this is just black acrylic paint. Uh, I'm just using a fine brush to just push it into the, all of the, the carving from the CNC. Uh, don't worry if you're, if you're going over the edges and getting onto the surface because that polycrylic will actually help us. And once I get a section done, I just take a piece of paper towel and, and dab it on there. Uh, to get the heavy the heavy uh, paint off the surface and then I'll take a wet cloth and follow that up and rub across the the uh, diagonally across the uh, painting so that you're not digging into all of the carving and, and digging paint out and you can see with a just a wet cloth uh, rubbing di diagonally you can get all of the paint off the surface and again that polycrylic is, is what makes this happen so you don't have to worry about a whole bunch of sanding and I'll go ahead and finish the rest of it here and you can see it looks really nice now because we had that polycrylic on there and we want to put resin on top uh, we're now going to sand a lot of that off. So I'm just going to take some 320 grit sandpaper with my palm sander and sand the surface just to get any residue black paint off and uh, get ready for the next step here. Okay, the last big step here is the resin pour. So I created some, some uh, acrylic, uh, just out of clear acrylic and some, some tape, taped up some border on the side so that my acrylic doesn't all run away when I pour it and mix it up and pour it in there. Good thick layer, you can do it randomly because we're then gonna take a, a just a tongue depressor type stick and smear it around a little bit. This this particular resin I used is, uh, is casting resin. So it'll take a day or so to really kind of, uh, to kind of cure. So we have some time to work with it here. And then the last step is to put some clamps down and uh, make sure that all of my resin doesn't leak down the sides of my form. And the last step, knock off the, uh, the forms and, and finish up the cutting to size. You can see there's a bit of a creep up the sides, but this board is bigger than I want to finish it at. So I'm just going to cut a, about three millimeters, a quarter inch off each side. And, and I'll also take my palm router and route the edges uh, to put a bevel on it. And the last step is to uh, do some fine sanding. I'll start with uh, 600 grit and work my way up to 3000, going through several different uh, uh, grit grades. And then the last step will be to use buffing compound and I'll buff it to a shine. 
And when you're finished, you end up with a sign that looks uh, pretty nice. Uh, again, I'm not sure why there's an orangutan here, but the sign looks good and that's all I'm, I'm really concerned about. As long as the customer is happy with his orangutan, uh, I'm, a, I'm happy as well. All right, so there you go, project's finished. Uh, customer's coming to pick it up uh, tomorrow, I think. And, uh, you know, hopefully he loves it. Now, I could have uh, cut some corners here. I could have, he, you know, his requirements were pretty open. It was just make it better than the old one. So honestly, that bar was pretty low, but uh, I wanted to do some extra work here. I could have easily done the CNC work and then finished at the painting job and said, here you go. And he would have, he would have loved it but I wanted to make something a little better, so I layered down about a quarter of an inch of acrylic on top of it and, uh, you know, polished it to a mirror finish, so hopefully he loves it. And, and uh, that extra bit of time, I think, will make all the difference to him. So, uh, you know, when you're building things, if you have a business, keep the customer in mind, uh, spend a little more time if you have to, and, and uh, you know, make sure you estimate for that, because uh, I estimate high because I know I'm going to spend extra time, but I spent probably probably two hours on this, uh, maybe a little more, and I could have easily did this job in an hour if I didn't want to do acrylic. So uh, I thought, now I'll spend some some extra time. He was okay with the price. So uh, anyway, with, with that, uh, if you're celebrating Christmas, uh, have a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to everybody, and uh, I'll see you in the new year. So get out there, make your world, spend some time with your family, of course, and uh, I'll see you in 2023.